Well, I think this leads into uh, this experiment where we'll look at the little one in the mirror there. Pardon? Needs a clean up. <laughs> well, not everywhere. Well, let's hold the uh, card out. Just you might rest your arm if you need to, and just look in the mirror. Where is your face? Out there. Out there. Do you find a face at the near end of your arm? No. No. Our mirrors show us what we look like at arm's length. And uh, if we bring them halfway towards us, that's what we look like at this range. It's a bit different. And then we bring it closer and we get a different view. And if you bring it right up to your eye, it's a blur. And then you bring it away. So your mirror shows you that your appearance changes with range. And if we had a big mirror on the other side of the circle, you could see your whole body, which is what other people see. And going further away, you'd see Perth and Australia and so on. We've got layers. Like Google Maps. Like Google Maps, <laughs> yes. Now, that's what uh, we look like at this range. What are we at center? That's the question that we're exploring today. Not just, we're exploring both really, aren't we? Mm. Exploring what we are socially all the time what we are socially, our appearance, our, our own point of view, you know, our, uh, in that way, and also what we are centrally, which is this amazing openness full of everything. So they're kind of opposites, in a way. And so our experiments are for celebrating both, really. I thought I turned it off. Ah. Sorry. It's your phone. Tiny person trapped in her bag. That's amazing. Sorry, I just. It's all right. Off. It's okay. It's all right. So now let's uh, guide our attention. We're looking at. We've been looking at what we look like at, what, at this range. Now let's guide our attention to what we are at center, and you look at the whole. And um, actually, I mean, you can compare your whole with the other holes, can't you? And, and mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> Is yours bigger than mine? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're more or less the same size, but they contain different things, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Each contains a, a different bit of the world. And you can compare yours with theirs. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, looking at yours, you bring it towards you and you notice it does something that the others are not doing. It grows bigger. But no face appears in it. And the others, are, a face appears in it. But mine, for me, it gets bigger and bigger. No face. And then I put it right on and no boundary. And I've guided my attention to this openness here. You put the, the hole on, uh, Marina. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Oh, that way. Yeah, no, that so way. So I'm still getting that. Ah, you are, you are enjoying <laughs> your appearance there. <laughs> no, I was just, I, I was just aware of how uncomfortable I felt with that mirror. I didn't mean, like it. Yes. <laughs> with, with looking in the mirror. Why do you think it's uncomfortable looking in the mirror? Well, I think there's probably some fraudulence there. Some? some fraudulence. I mean, that's not, you know, what I'm seeing there is not really yes. what I'm really seeing. Yes. Well, this one is imperfect, isn't it? I mean, mine is, anyway. It has lots of stuff wrong with it. Yes, lots of... 
Thank you, too. And then this one, wrinkly, doesn't have anything wrong with it. Isn't that a relief? Oh. Mm. That how she grew up with a grandmother who had no mirrors in No mirrors, house. oh right, yes. Kind of freeing. Just the view out. <laughs> yes, yeah, just the view <laughs> out. Yeah. Karina, notice you're the only one who can do this without looking like a nun. <laughs> 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 I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> to yourself, of course. <laughs> So, would someone else like to just guide us through that? Just talk us through that, just putting the, the space on. Thank you. <laughs> Starting with the mirror? As you like. Uh -huh. As you like. So, just holding your piece of paper with the mirror on at that arm's leg, just look at what others in the world see and how you see yourself when you're looking a real mirror. But is that you? Can we bring it closer? Can you get bigger? But do you? What gets bigger? And then taking the paper out to arm's length again, look through the hole and notice that your, the hole in your paper seems bigger because it's about perspective and distance. And moving around the circle, feel yourself in that hole. Who are you? And then bring the hole to your face, around your head, slowly, slowly, just feeling the change in the perception and the sensation. Who sees? Who are you? Thank you. Mm. Bringing the little one up to you results in kind of bumping into something, you know, you kind of, the one who's there is always over there and when you try and bring him or her up to you, they, you lose them, they, they're gone and they can't come all the way up to where you are anyway. You can't actually bring what you look like to where you are in, in perception. Whereas if the emptiness represented by the whole, which represents your true nature, you can actually bring that right up to you and put it on because it's already who you are. You can put on infinity. Let me just articulate briefly four stages and um, that this makes easy to articulate really. Um, the first stage of our lives, the, ba the four stages, the baby, the child, the adult and the seer. And the baby, stage one, which we all started with, is headless. Yes, you're at large. If you look in a mirror, you don't identify with that. And uh, you haven't learned to see yourself from outside yet. And you haven't learned there's something behind you. Your hand disappears, it goes. It, the, the, you haven't learned about the other room or something under the floor. There's just what's given. Mm -hmm. And you haven't learned uh, about time. There's just 
just now, isn't there? You haven't yet learned about Tuesday morning. You heard those words, it wouldn't mean anything to you. So I like to think of it as three things. There's, there's only here, because you haven't learned about there yet. There's only now, you haven't learned about then. And there's only a self in a way, you haven't really learned about others. You haven't got a developed sense that others are out there, that there are about ten different minds here, you know, looking through those eyes. So you haven't learned about others and self. And uh, growing up is learning to see yourself as others see you, physically and uh, as a person, in time and in space. And as a child, you're, you're learning language and uh, learning to see yourself and take responsibility for the box that you're in the body you're in, the mind you've got, and learning that you've got a mind and everyone else has got one. But as a child, you're not quite fully in the box yet. You keep forgetting and living freely from this largeness, where your mind uh, is everywhere, and uh, you're not contained. And then the uh, third stage, <coughs> First stage is this, without awareness of this. Second stage is both, isn't it? Mm. Third stage is just seeing myself as you see me and denying the reality of this openness here that I'm looking at. And now I am a person in time. I know about yesterday and tomorrow and when I am. I know where I am. I'm in Australia at the moment, not in England. And I know about the rest of the world, you know, that I can't see beyond the edge of this eye. Mm. Fantastic. It's like a, it's a very amazing edge here, the edge of the world. And I've learned about what's beyond this edge. I can't see. And I have uh, fully accept I'm in this body and you're in the body there. And my thoughts, which I've only, I've only ever experienced my thoughts, my field of thinking, I now imagine are in a box here, and you've got, there's another field of thinking hidden somewhere in that box. Mm. And I've only ever experienced my field of sensation, body sensation. But in the third stage, I, I, I uh, accept that they're in this, and that you've got a field of sensation somewhere over there, mm. in that body. So this is, I now am convinced, I've forgotten I, now I'm overlooking I'm one, and I'm convinced I'm one amongst many. It's amazing, amazing development. Mm. Now what we're enjoying... You've been successfully hypnotized. Mm. Yes, mm. successfully, totally. Yeah. Yes. Without knowing it. Yeah. Yes. Without consenting, well... <laughs> yeah. And then what we're enjoying today is, is both, isn't it? That's the thing, you don't have to deny now what we've learned. It's a fantastic development, is to become, is the one becoming aware of, of also being a little one. So that it can share together with many voices. So privately now, we're all seeing that we're the one, which is amazing. And we're all aware that publicly we're just a little one. Fantastic. And so, you know, the, 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 there are these creation myths and the, the general pattern is in the beginning was the one. Well, actually, before the beginning there wasn't even the one. Right? There was nothing. And suddenly the one, or God, or whatever you want, appears out of nothing and goes, Oh my God, how did I do that? Right? How amazing I am. This is you. you know, where did the one come from? Well, you can only ask yourself that. And there's no answer. How did the one, how did this one come to be? How is it doing it? <laughs> how is it making the bird song? It's asking itself, isn't it? Because there isn't another one. And it doesn't know. 
Fantastic. Good luck finding out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it forgot. says to itself. We forgot to write an instruction manual. Didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> but then in this story, the one who is so blown away by being, you know, it's happened just miraculously, you know, impossible, gets lonely and bored and wants friends to share, you know, its kind of wonder at being with and wants adventures to go on. And realizes the only way of doing this is to actually uh, create others, real others. And also create a world, because to go on an adventure you've got to go somewhere. And you've got to have uh, time, don't you? I'll meet you at Jacob's Creek tomorrow at noon. Bring a friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this, isn't it? You could, if you were the only one and there was nowhere else but here and no other but now, and only, you couldn't do that. <laughs> meet, you at, meet you at the Pine... What's this place called? Piney, Piney, Lake. Lake. Piney Lakes at 10 on Sunday. There'll be about 10 others there. Fantastic. And it turns out you need a whole universe to produce this veranda. It turns out you do. (laughs) 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 Yeah, that's um, that's a pretty awesome thought. Mm. You need 13.9 billion years to to get us to this. Incredible. A high cost, but I think affordable. So I've got the list changed my back pocket somewhere. <laughs> well, it's funny, isn't it? So in our, it's amazing because people tell this creation myth as if it happened a long time ago to someone else and it's just a myth. Actually, it's your own actual life history. Mm. It's your own. It's because you're not just, you know, waking up to who you really are. It's realizing you're not just the little one, you're the big one. Mm. And what is the history of the big one? Well, you have to then look at your own history. Mm. And in, in your own lifetime, you were the one not knowing about others or time or space. And uh, you went through this process of forgetting that, if you like, and becoming a human, becoming an individual in society, you know, in a big world. Mm. And fantastic, isn't it? In our own lives, we're the one who's completely forgotten about being the one. Mm. You know, if you like, uh, my reflection on that is so that I could have friends. See? And, that, and that in order to really believe that you're there and I'm here, it seems I had to forget I was the one. Because if I always knew I was the one, I wouldn't really believe, mm. you know, take it seriously. Mm. So pr- hypnosis wouldn't have worked. Wouldn't have worked, mm. no. So I, I, I find that in my own life, I, have, I had to deeply, profoundly forget I was the one. You know, I mean, it's an amazing achievement, isn't it? Because you're actually looking out of the one. You are the one. Yeah. And you've managed to forget that. that. That's a pretty amazing thing. It's in itself. Yeah. 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 It's, it's astonishing. Yeah. And what I love about this approach is it doesn't make that a mistake, that forgetting. Mm-hmm. Yes. And forgetting becomes part of the journey. Yes. And in life, that means I don't have to beat myself up when I forget this now, mm-hmm. because that's part of the recognition of it is the forgetting of it. You can't have the two, one without the other. Yeah. 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 Yes. I find myself forgetting, and so then I have to think: Is that a mistake, or is it actually not a mistake? And, it, and I find that in order to have the joy of remembering, I've got to forget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, li- I, I want to keep remembering. It's not an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to have the next episode, you've got to temporarily forget. Mm. Mm. And then, then you can remember again. Mm. Yeah. And... Uh, it, I, I, uh, it's comforting actually because I mean lately I've been in a forgetful space you know because mm-hmm. I've been doing stuff and having adventures and 
Did um, you find the void had gone anywhere in your absence? <laughs> 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 it snuck away? <laughs> no, that's right. But it's as if it did. Yes. It's as if it did. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's, I, I don't, it doesn't. When you check, it's, well, it, it couldn't have gone anywhere. But it's as if it did. It's an amazing... Yeah. It's not something that's going Yeah, because it's sort of easy to beat yourself up about that, you know. I mean, you you think, oh, you know, like I used to be into a bit of a spiritual sort of realisation thing, but now I've just sort of, I've I've obviously lost it, you know. Good idea. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Indeed. Yeah. I th- yes, it's as if I've got to keep reaffirming my separateness. You know, forgetting is, reaff- is dropping into that separateness, isn't it? Right. Yeah. You could say as a species what distinguishes us amongst the species we know is we're the best at forgetting. We really do a good job of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We forget completely to the point where if we don't remember, we're, we, we're quite destructive to all the other species. Mm-hmm. If we get stuck in the unremembering space. Yes. Yes. And that's the only problem, is, is not, you know, it, that, those four stages are a continuum, and the fourth stage is like, is just full adulthood in a way. And to, the, only, the only difficulty is if, if you get caught, if you get stuck as a, you know, arrested development somewhere along the line. And we see kids who don't develop into the third stage, we recognise that they have got some, deve- we call it a developmental problem, don't we? We don't call them retarded anymore, you know, that's rude. And, and kids who don't play the, the, the social game don't get socialised. We, we say they haven't developed properly, and it's true in a certain way. But we don't realise, as a culture, that where most people are psychologically is also a case of arrested development. Mm-hmm. And that's why this kind of work that we're doing today is so important, is because it, 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 it doesn't happen by itself. There has to be a kind of external shock delivered mm-hmm. to us to to jump into the next. All the other stuff happens kind of automatically in a way. Mm. But mm. This, this stage seems to have an inter- need an intervention of some kind. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's what's traditionally been called religion or spirituality. Mm. But it, that too, you know, gets, gets co-opted by the, the hypnosis as mm. well. So mm. it has to be invented afresh all the time. Mm. And this so is a very fresh... born out of great discontent or something. Well, yeah, the alarm clock is that we get so... Well, it's like you, you take the fish out of water and it starts to gasp for water. And that's what our identification with, just with what we look like is like being taken out of the void and taken out of our, our who we really are. And that's acute discomfort, isn't it? Mm. Is that like that sense of separate, separateness can drive us on this spiritual journey, mm. but still in that, within that separateness, it's like... God and enlightenment's out there, yeah. mm. and we're, we're here, yeah. so it can fool us still. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, a lot of what gets mm. called spirituality is just a more refined version of the third stage. Yeah. It's just a more subtle way of being, mm. of identifying with, with the way you look. And so people go through all the emotions of being spiritual and they, they take on a, uh, you know, persona. a persona. Mm. Exactly, mm. they take on a spiritual persona. And interestingly, in a lot of initiations, you are given a spiritual name. It's as if they accept that that's going to happen. That you're going to actually become a spiritual person. Mm. Mm. And our friend Aji Shanti says, when you awaken, you'll completely lose your spiritual life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you always used to think, oh, that's harsh, and then I saw this, and I oh, okay, yeah, that's what he means. <laughs> you see how concepts actually get in the way. Oh, absolutely. Once you've experienced it. Yeah. That's why the non-verbal perceptual aspect of this is so important, so wonderful, mm. and so fresh. It's actually... The non-verbal aspect of it. Yeah, the non-verbal perceptual aspect. It's, it's undeniable in a way. Mm. Yes. I, the four stages are, are useful, aren't they? They're useful to me because when you see this, you have to make some sense of it, you know, to, to, to some degree. To And I never fully understand it, but it... it it does make sense of things. 
and uh, yeah. I can see this open space here, but you can see something. How do I understand that? Mm. So, It's interesting what you said. That this does help you make sense of things, but I've never, I've never made sense of the actual how, how things are given. In the sense, I mean, I've never been able to understand it, as you say. I can't form a coherent mental picture of how it's done. <laughs> how it's, you know, it's, it, and you have to kind of give up doing that in order to really enjoy it. Don't mm -hmm. you? At some level, but it does make sense of what's happened to me in my life. That, that story that you told is, is it's, it's our story, it's the every man's story. Mm. And it's brilliant because it, it, it kind of redeems all that stuff that happened. Mm. It makes sense of it, literally. Mm.